What's going on everybody? This is Cody and this is just a nice quick little um, review of all the things about this game so far that I have encountered that have literally caused me to go into fits of rage. Now the game we are doing today is Massive Chalice, which I may or may not actually do a let's play of pretty soon, but um, yeah, let us go ahead and begin with a couple of things. Alright everybody, so as I mentioned before, this game is called Massive Chalice and it is an early access video game that you can buy off of Steam for approximately $25 to $30. I can't remember exactly how much it was. I got it at the very beginning of this year, um, well not very beginning, but a couple, a few days into the year I should say. So anyway, what's this game about, Cody? Well, it is a third person real time strategy game with somewhat of an RPG kind of thing going for it. Anyway, um, you're basically trying to save the world from a whole bunch of bug-like monsters and a whole bunch of really nasty stuff. So let's go ahead and get some of the gameplay going and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. Bellow the horns of birth. Okay, so what we're looking at here is basically a gigantic chalice that you as the main character of the game are birthed from using different bloodlines of multiple people, um, which you ultimately will take command of. Anyway, the chalice gods or whatever you want to call them are given you the power of eternal life and they have you command several people in your army to take out what's called the Cadence. And um, throughout the entire game you get a whole bunch of smart ass remarks from the narration of these um, disembodied voices that you are currently hearing. Okay, so here we are with the three main classes in the game, the Camberjack, the Alchemist, and the Hunter. Now, when you are playing the game, you have obviously got five groups of people, or five individuals rather, and at the very beginning you get five different families if you're really lucky and you'll usually have upwards of like 10-15 waiting when you get back so even if you lose one it won't be catastrophically terrible but in that capacity you do not want to lose your people at all if possible because it'll take time to train them up it'll take time to get through their strengths and weaknesses all that kind of good they jelly stuff anyway at the beginning of the game hard, you start with the down. alchemist the hunter and so the camberjacks all three of them, of course, have different abilities, and they're different traits like um, weak at heart, um, strong-willed, all those kind of things will affect their abilities. Now, if you take a young Caberjack, he's going to be a little bit better at taking damage and can do all sorts of kind of cool stuff. Now, if you take the old Bowman, for example, or the old Hunter, he will be able to um, have better aim, for example, or something like that. Now... When you're fighting the enemies, you have to use uh, the abilities to your best advantage. So you don't want to send your bowman point blank range up to, say, this um, freaking uh, laps up here. Which, by the way, those were like the first annoying things I encountered in this game. And uh, believe it or not, I wish that was the only thing that was really that annoying. Because there are so many more, more horrible things in this game than that. Um, yeah, so Alchemist basically has this ability to like, throw grenades and all that kind of good jolly stuff. And um, they can do single strikes, they can do um, multi-strike if they're leveled up high enough. The bowmen, they actually are capable of sending out multiple um, direct fire attacks. Um, but they're still affected by probability, so even with a 100% chance of hitting, I've actually missed before, which was thoroughly infuriating. But um, yeah, so the camberjacks are basically for knockbacks and close quarters combat. And um, alchemists are artillery, and the hunt the hunters are good at sniping. So that pretty much handles all of the character types. Uh, now, when you get past everything, you actually can increase your numbers and get stronger by um, 
making different members of different houses get together to where they technically cross class and become Shadow Jacks is why I'm going to mix a, a um, Camber Jack and a Hunter together so they gain the ability to hide in the shadows long enough to do sneak attacks so they basically become an assassin with a big ass hammer. In lack of better terms that's what I would call it. Okay so as you can see here I have uh, pointed out the very important fact that you need to be a tactical mastermind sometimes to play this game. Now early game everything is relatively easy but the game scales in difficulty as you go further along the 300 year war. Now keep in mind that you are an immortal individual so for you this stuff is just a matter of like waiting 20-30 seconds between a battle popping up and not popping up and all that kind of good stuff and keep in mind that as you fight your characters do get stronger so you know it's, it always pays to rotate them out but remember they are mortal so they will die and um, as they die they may or may not leave an heirloom that can be passed down between generations of people which is good because okay you get a level one weapon it gets passed down to your grandson it gets to level two it passes down to their grandson it becomes level four it passes down so on and so forth so on and so forth so on and so forth and eventually you have a planet nuke and crossbow which um, would be absolutely fantastic. Now, again, you are not going to get very far if you do not utilize the ability to um, combine all your characters' abilities together. And uh, it's very important that you um, make sure everything is in line and be able to attack as effectively as possible. Because if not, you will lose people. And if you lose them all, you do not get them back. They are permadeath situations, and you have to wait a good portion of a game to get them back up to um, I believe it is 15 years old or whatever the coming of age um, situation the condition for that being met so yeah it's very important to utilize your team as best as it possibly can be used so make sure you have tanks you make sure your artillery is out of range of everything else you want to make sure that you have appropriate items and things like that so make sure when you're doing research and stuff over a multiple time period kind of deal that everything is dealt accordingly and you will thoroughly enjoy this game if I had to say so and um, yeah so I think that covers it for a um, an introduction to this game so if you want to be sure to like the video subscribe um, share and I will see you guys eventually with some uh, showcases of the baddies in this game so have a good one guys